everybody. Welcome to the weekend. It's Friday. It's Friday. TGIF, you have made it another week. And welcome to another episode of A Blind Guy. His wife, Laquita Marie. There. We do that every Friday. Yeah. <laughs> Mess up the uh, algorithm of the show. You got it. <laughs> a Blind Guy. His, his wife. wife their life, life live. We're here every Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at. 11.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that we can share with you our personal net, personal network of professional and colleagues and friends as we shift the narrative of what it means to be normal while we focus on entertainment, career opportunities and choices, business opportunities, and health and wellness, all within a fun field, 30 minutes or so, as we explore our world as a blind guy, his life, and they Because, you know, Corey is blind. He cannot see. That's what blind means. We all, it, it means that because we have to give that disclaimer. People keep thinking Corey does many blinds, but he does not. Corey can't see. So I can open and close them, but that's all I can do. Yeah, you can open and close them, <laughs> but that's not your thing. <laughs> this is going to be a fun show today, Corey. I think we're closing out this Friday with the bang. This is going to be so much fun. I am excited. Now, normally we start with a five-minute story or we start with the word on the street. But today, because we have such a fascinating guest, we are actually going to give her maximum time on our show today. Our, our special so we guest, are doing a five-minute um, anything? No, nah, we're going give, to give our special guest all the floor that she can have. Today. Let me do some tech work in the back. Go ahead on. Now, today we want to bring, bring forth our first special guest. We're just going to bring her in to say hello. She is a world traveler and an international businesswoman. She is a master of all trades, various trades. She's worked with a special needs population internationally as well. She is what her name is Elizabeth, but because you just never know where she might be, I'm always saying, Where in the world is Elizabeth? Elizabeth, we're going to bring Elizabeth in to say hello to our viewing audience really quickly. Hey there, good morning. Hello, world. How is everyone? Hey. So far, so good. We are excited because we always say, where in the world are you? We don't know if you're in Malawi. We're in Texas. You're in Ghana. We don't know, right? So she might be at the North Pole right now for all we know. Uh, I don't I'm know if that's Texas. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we will see you soon, okay? Okay. All right. Well, Corey, let's say good morning to everybody. Well, we talking about the plant based tree. Oh, oh yeah. We God. always I'm end every God. episode. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, so you messing up the algorithm again. Yeah. <laughs> we always end every episode with Laquita Marie, Chef Laquita Marie's plant based treat. Are you going to give them a sneak preview today? Mm -hmm. We can give them a sneak preview because, you know, this uh, baked good is related to our guest today. Keep that in mind. Good old fashioned drop biscuits to prep. Now I'm telling Ooh. you, these good old fashioned drop biscuits are uh, just like they came out with Country Kitchen. Now, this broadcast is member supported by viewers like you. So if they want to become part of the, the blind guy, his wife, their wife, blind guy, his wife, their life Look at family. You. Let me just talk. Guys, blind guy, his wife, their life family. All they you can bum rush the buttons. <laughs> Hit the like button. That's the best way you can support this production. Another way that you can support Hit the this share button too. Share, yes. And another way you can uh, support this production is you can always go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash blind guy his wife. Corey and I are right at the top and this way you know you're at the right place and you can also click support. We don't have um, a uh, it's a one time thing where you can just like you know click one coffee or three coffees or five coffees or you can type in your own number. I'm going to put in 125 coffees. You can even leave a nice message. You can leave your name. Those are all optional. But keep in mind that 100% of all proceeds do go to Atumpan Edutainment. It's a 501c3 nonprofit that we started 22 or 23 years ago. I lose track. I can't add that well anymore. But we have we are storytellers. So we left you a gift right here. That video is a storytelling video. Uh, just a treat for you guys. So please support this stream with a thumbs up, with a like, with a share. And of course, you know what to do. You can always buy us a coffee. 
We got to uh, we gotta say hi to the folks, Corey. So I'm going to read the comments today. I we got have you. Sonia with the Y saying, good morning, everybody. Hey, Sonia with the Y. She says, did somebody say Friday? <laughs> <laughs> so y'all know I already told Corey that that was in there. Phil Waldo Jr. is saying, good morning, all. He says, Sonia with the Y, I'm going to tell Pop. <laughs> PWJ got second place again today. Yeah, he didn't make it in first, but Sonya with the Y says she's on the phone with him now. She'll tell him for him. <laughs> she was like, I'll tell dad for you. And uh, she also asked, just people just throwing shade. You know, it's a shady Friday. Phil, how did you feel when you saw I was already logged on? Uh, out loud? <laughs> hey, one love, family. X. MC. Sonya with a Y is saying hello to XDMC. Make sure you go to Barnstorming Productions if you want to get some work done. Um, like if you are a television station, because he only does movies and big contracts like that. But you know, he sometimes works with smaller people and regular folks and average folks and you know, exceptional people too. Barnstorming Productions. So we also have Philip Waldo Jr. saying it's them little girls all over again beating me to the TV on Saturday morning to watch the Smurfs. <laughs> That's old school. If y'all remember the Smurfs, hey, you, la, 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 yeah, la, la, you are la. not a spring chicken. Afrothopia, Afrothopia audio experience says, hey, 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 folks. Corey, Afrothopia is a new podcast. Yes, check out Afrothopia, the podcast. It's got news and information coming from straight from the continent of Africa. So don't forget to check it out wherever you download and listen to podcasts. Absolutely. We'll talk more about that later. Afrothopia is laughing in here. And then we got uh, Milton. Philip Waldo Jr. saying, hey, and then here's Milton Kraft. Good morning. Milton Kraft in the house. Check out Milton's YouTube channel, Man on a Mission, and his wife, Sanal's YouTube channel, Sanal, doing great things in Memphis for all through their craft organization. Yes. Good job, Milton Kraft. All the way from Zambia. Hey there, family. That Miss Grace? Absolutely. It's Miss Grace in the house. She says, she want to bless us up today. Yes. Miss Grace is Jamaican, but she's in Zambia and um, over there in Africa having a good old time. Miss Grace was over there. She was dipping and falling back, dipping and falling back. Uh, let me move forward. Hey, there. Go. We got a farmer in the house. A farmer from Florida says, hello, family. And a farmer from Florida. Giselle, the Giselle, author. Giselle, Giselle, the author. Giselle, she's a farmer. Oh, Giselle, the farmer, had a farm. I've got her book, guys. The <laughs> Husbands I Thought I Found. So, yeah, she's an author. She's a farmer. She's an amazing mom and wife. Philip Waldo Jr. It says, says that we're both um, algorithm messer uppers. Just so you know, Corey. Uh, hey, Miss Grace says she wants, she wants some of those biscuits. Look, you're going to see that recipe soon and very soon. And the birthday boy, Corey, ah, David Hunt's birthday was yesterday, and I didn't mention it when he was here. All right, we got to do it. This is your birthday song. It isn't very long. Okay, what's the next comment? <laughs> Happy Theo is reminding you all, yes, hit the like button. Smash it. Tear it up. Mm -hmm. So we also have, uh oh, hold up. Hold up. Let me tell you, Corey, uh, Philip Waldo Jr. is hitting the like button just for the, today's bloopers. Um, and XDMC saw that print shirt that Lizzie Beatty had on. He said, fire. <laughs> ah, guess I should have known. By the way, you popped your car sideways, it wouldn't last. Uh, you know what? Thank you, Sonya, with the Y. She says, sounds like you all did not have your coffee this morning. I'll buy you guys a coffee. Look, we appreciate Thank that. Thank you very much. Yes, <laughs> any support, all support is appreciated. So if you'd like to buy us a coffee, guys, just hit the link in the chat. That's all you got to do. But we also have here, uh, oh, let's see who we got. Mama C, that's my mama. Good morning, Mother everybody. Mother-in-law, <laughs> mother-in-law. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed, Every Ethiopia is saying. And, you know, Giselle does remember the Smurfs. Philip Waldo is not sure if, um, he says, Corey, do they fly Ethiopian Airlines? The Smurfs? Probably so, because Prince Quasi is in here, too, saying. Prince Quasi! Hey. All the way from Ghana. He's over there in West Africa saying, hey, y'all. Miss And Miss uh, Liz Biddy is, is even chatting up with Miss Grace. I got to kids are in here. I Everybody's in here. I got to do this for Prince Quasi. Psycho Alpha Disco Beta Bio Alpha Dulu. Why must I hold my breath? Fearing that I might choke in the water. Wait, wait a minute. <laughs> what? 
got a little parliament for you guys. I see how, I how, how many of you guys remember parliament? Let's bet it does. I saw her backstage singing and dancing. All right, all right. The good news is that um, Giselle is saying sing, Corey, even though she was saying that from the birthday song. You know, she was saying that <laughs> earlier. Philip Waldo Jr. is shouting out his mama, all of that kind of stuff. And Giselle is so pleasant. She says, hey, Corey, how are you? I'm doing great, Giselle. Well, Miss uh, Grace says, oh, Corey makes me laugh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she says, Corey, you have me laughing down and dancing at the same time is what Giselle <laughs> says. So she got the dancing things up there, says it's too cute. You know, we also have uh, David Hunt saying he loves the birthday song. Speaking of that, our kids are talking to their grandma saying, hey, grandma, and guess who's in here? Edwin Nilante Thompson. Hi, how are you hey, doing? Hey, Edwin. Good to have you here today. We are ready to bring um, our guest in because we got people in there cutting up. <laughs> I'm serious. Like, you know, people are saying hi to each other. Like, Giselle is like, hi, mama. And the guys are all talking to each other and talking to the ladies. Elizabeth is chatting it up. But, you know, um, this is the problem. XDMC is talking about Pastor Mike Prince Quasi. So that's why we're just going <laughs> to skip forward. We're going to just skip forward because they are doing too much. And, you know, Philip Aldo Jr., no, Corey, uh, they do, do they fly eight? No, Corey, AAE, do they fly Ethiopian Air, airlines? What's the AAE? Yeah, the AAE, what is that? I don't know. Look, I don't know. But, you know, uh, <laughs> Prince Quasi says crickets, Corey. I'm not that old. Never heard no song like that. Come on now. And then he got his laughing face. Nah, no, he's not telling story. I know. Nah, Prince Crazy, Prince Crazy, everybody knows Parliament. Even if you're like five years old, you heard a Parliament song somewhere. But well, Edwin is saying hello. Uh, David Hunt is bigging up Ethiopian Air, saying don't <laughs> mention it while you're around. <laughs> Sonya with the Y is saying happy belated birthday, Mr. Hunt. Everybody's saying hello. Let's bring them on in, Corey. All right. Today's special guest, a lot of singing been going on this morning, a lot of mentions of song, because today's special guest is a music connoisseur whose yes. travels have taken her around the world in pursuit of some of the best music and concerts that she that you could ever imagine. She also has been traveling around the world to not just for work, but to also establish herself as an international businesswoman. So you're speaking of all the businesses she has, like in Nigeria, in Ghana, Dubai, Malawi. South Africa, the North Pole, the South Pole. Antarctica, Texas. Iceland, Greenland. I don't think it's that many, but go ahead. But she <laughs> is a world traveler and an international businesswoman. She's become a, a, a inspiration to a lot of people. She has her own YouTube channel, according to Lisa Biddy, and she has her own podcast, Afrethiopia. And she is a, so she's a media specialist, she is a business specialist, and she's dear and dear to my heart because she spent a lot of, dedicated a lot of her life to working with people who are differently able. Deaf and blind. Specifically the deaf and the blind. So the deaf, that's most men in this chat, and the blind, <laughs> that's me. So with that being said, we want to say where in the world is Lizza Biddy as we bring together, to, to, uh, together with us, our featured guest. She is none other than the international businesswoman. She is Lizza Biddy. Hey, Lizza Biddy, how you doing today? I am fine, but you are absolutely hilarious. <laughs> so we're gonna have to get him on his own stand-up show. He is you in know, here clowning. Look, we gotta we gotta do something. We gotta do something with Corey. I'm not sure uh, what, but hey. Who thinks I need to be in one of those love me jackets? Yeah, mm -hmm. straight jackets. Uh -huh. Chris Gracie is laughing in the background, and uh, Miss Grace notices that you are all the specialists. Only Elizabeth and uh, she was also saying, "Who else is dancing to this music?" You know. <laughs> so Corey, even though Philip Walter Jr. is clowning you, saying you're showing your DC Elementary Foundation, uh, like Deep Creek. Let's uh let's talk one, about <laughs> two clear how you count one and the queen like that's one, an inside joke. Don't two. even think about it. Let's talk about you, Elizabeth. Where are we gonna start, Corey? Let's start with, let's show some pictures of her. Let's start with showing some of her pictures. And the Elizabeth has uh, a lot of business that involve a lot of different things. Now you have here some some foot fashion. Uh, that we're going to show from her business and it's, it's, it's shoes so that you get made in Nigeria, correct? So these, all these businesses have some connection to Al Kebulon or Africa. Is that correct? That is correct. 
So tell us about the shoes. Because we're looking so at these, these are um, unisex sandals that can be worn, of course, by men and women. Those are handmade in Nigeria. Ah. Uh -huh. So mm -hmm. now these are, and these are flip flops. These are um, just flip flops. I'm a flip flopaholic myself personally. <laughs> also made in Nigeria. No, those are those are not made in Nigeria. Those okay. are made elsewhere. Um, okay, These those are, are the uh, more. Yes, yes, yes. So, so if we want to, um, I'm going to pull up your website because. You are like these shoes didn't just materialize, you know, from themselves. And just so that you know, you do have people actually being serious. Philip Walter Jr. is welcoming you, even though David Hunt is still laughing and saying that you're hilarious, Corey. Um, so, uh, <laughs> why is that Elizabeth, Elizabeth didn't start off dearly beloved? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Let's talk about the sandals, period. Those sandals are cute. Tell us some of the processes of like how do these sandals and flip-flops happen because you are the business owner i'm going to drop the link to your uh to the shop that i'm going to post up in the chat but tell us like how how does this happen how do you get, come to be a shoe salesman you know so um one i am a professed shoeaholic that's the first thing so typically um, you should, if you want to get in business, you want to get in business with something that you have a passion about um, because you have the insight into that arena. Um, so as I started this journey, I began to just draw some of my own. Like I have lots of designs in, in sketchbooks that I have um, that have never actually um, matured that way. And then I, I start to I started to teach myself like about shoe construction and what all of that entails. Um, it's not as simple as people may think it is. Right. Um, I and so site you have you have details that I don't see on a lot of sites, like talking about a normal arch, a low arch, a high arch. Yeah. So you educated yourself and then you were able to put a lot of this into your passion. Go ahead. I'm just clicking through the site, Correct. look at things. So for me, it um, the different times that I've gone to the continent, I have always tried to seek out vendors that I could do business with, um, do some type of international trade. And that's actually how it came about. Um, because you go through when you're trying to make prototypes for shoes, you go through uh <laughs> Growing pains, if you will, because prototypes are not cheap. It doesn't matter what the shoe looks like. They are expensive, regardless of the um, quality and everything. So um, different places I went. Yes, I, I, I went to Morocco, of course, um, Senegal, as well as Nigeria, because they do have good shoe artisans there. And so that's how it came about. But uh, but of course, trying to just bridge that gap and use them because most people typically um, use China as a base to start a business because China is now the basically the manufacturing capital of uh, the world. Right. And so, yeah. So I was trying to find, of course, as I say, vendors on the continent that I could use. And that pretty much is, is, is how those transactions came about. Those business transactions came about. Now, with the flip flops, the shoes and the sandals. Now, a lot of things when we talk about China, durability becomes a question when you talk about things coming from China. You know, Corey, speaking of durability, you know, Justine Ruth is also. Um, Justine, Justine. Yeah, she's one of those people that she says, I moved around a little bit. And so right. she's like, hello, family. She's in here. And then let, listen to Prince Quasi. Talking about she will haul it more like an alcoholic. Don't be, don't be telling our business. That's why that flask is on the site. So I'm gonna show y'all that flask because I don't. I got a yes. drink. Please like do. Please yeah. do, Queen. <laughs> She's laughing in here. Let me ask this question. Talking about she, my sister. The durability of the products in Nigeria, I'm pretty sure, is a lot better, especially considering one who was raised where flip flops were shoe wear, but also became a tool of correction for a child that was such as myself. 
So are these these shoes, you, know, you find the products that you get from Nigeria and the other African vendors are more durable and more higher quality. And I also want to know about, um, like, honestly speaking, you do have a flask on here. Like, this is necessary. So these products. How was the durability of them? How do you secure those things? So if you guys are looking for something, okay. to put your things so, in, tell us. yeah. So um, let me go to Corey's question first. Okay. So even though China, so China is the manufacturing capital of the world. Now, with that, you can find vendors who will actually use um, better materials. It's all about the lajon meaning how much money you're willing to pay because you have a lot of high end vendors that basically use China as a manufacturing place. So if you want high quality, they can get it for you. Now, in terms of the materials that my vendor uses, he does get some of his, um, he makes all kinds of shoes, all kinds of men's shoes at that. Let me say that. Um, most of his stuff comes out of Italy. Um, but he does his own stuff as well. So when he does ordering, he does order from um, Italy. So I, I, I'll say that. Um, but again, just in China, it depends on what you want to pay. If you want to hire, for example, as I, I, I think I mentioned this before when Quita and I was talking in, in regards to the flip-flops, because I like flip-flops so much, but I don't like my feet being tired. So there is a process that you can use on flip-flops so that people can wear them all day and their feet are not tired. Well, you're going to pay for that. So when people say, oh, Elizabeth, your flip-flops are, they're almost $30. Yeah, but your feet's not going to be tired. Right. right, right. You know what? And so, speaking of that, um, Green, she says, she says, she's saying the same thing. She says, China, no good. Don't walk in water. Don't walk too hard. You know, and your feet will get tired. You know, the shoes are gonna fall apart. You don't have the durability. You don't have the durability there. And again, you know, things are just not going to go well. So the nice thing is that we have here some products that we can go to if we are looking for durability. If we're looking to shop internationally and know that it's something that's made in Nigeria by our people, and you know, it's it's good. So moving forward then, going from there, you could be anywhere. Let's see what we got here in the okay. um, in the vault. What pictures do you want to show next, Corey? Because we've got some good stuff here. Well, you've also spent some time traveling in Dubai. So we have some pictures of you in Dubai and various places like the Opera House. So music is near and okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, because you, you're a music-holic and you, you admitted that to me. You were holic. And you actually... Uh, uh, crafted your own songs for your uh, Af Af Ethiopia podcast and you got them copywritten and so and trademarked. So tell us about that. Yeah, because we're gonna so, play. Like, we're gonna right. play. So I've videos. used um, I've used vendors that I can find on the continent. Now, just like anywhere, you may have to go through trial and error to get someone who is good, competent, and all of that, but you just keep looking. Um, just like it, it's just like at home. It's just like at home. So, you know, it, it always um, amazes me too when people talk about, um, you know, quality here and there and everywhere. It's the same at, at home. Every vendor you use in the States is not up to whatever quality and whatever item that you want. So you just have to keep finding. And so um, I do have some people that, that I, you know, I just have, and I may not have never done business with them, but they put out a good product. Like it, it, it just happens when you begin to um, seek these people out. Like I know jewelry makers, if somebody wanted to start up um, their own jewelry maker, I know some folks down in South Africa, these ladies, are, they are bad to the bone. And, and and they can work with brass, gold, silver, and all of that. I'm I, even though I love accessories myself, I, I'm not necessarily in, into the jewelry business. However, I could point someone into the right direction just um, with these particular ladies th that I have had the pleasure of of meeting and and whatever. But yeah, so that that's pretty that's pretty much it. Pretty much. So you're saying these ladies are in South Africa, but um, you also were in Malawi when you were teaching Tadoma to the blind, it's a, a, a method of communication and then Correct. you're proficient in sign language, right? Correct. In American sign language, as you know, there's American different sign. sign. 
across the world. But mm-hmm. yes, yeah, so um, in Malawi, that's actually how I how I got my my first taste of Alkebulon was um, going to Malawi. And I went with, it was a team of us, a team of us who actually worked with um, special needs children in different capacities. And so that's how we actually um, went there. And it, yeah, it was a very enlightening experience. We basically were, were teaching the special ed teachers there who were in college, how to use different methodologies to teach children with sensory impairments. And so oh. I was the deafblind specialist. And that's how Tadoma came about. So for me. For Al Kevlon, for those of you who don't know, it's not a drink, it's not a food. <laughs> Al Kevlon is the original name for the continent of Africa. Right. And Justine is saying this is a great lesson for us looking to do business on the continent. Philip Waldo Jr. says, you're truly international. And also Justine says she can sign, similar to French sign language too. So that's interesting that you say there are different ones around the world because a friend of ours, her uncle is blind, is deaf, but he's, they're Ethiopian. They speak Tigrinya. They be, they, yeah, they speak Tigrinya. So it's a different sign, but it's interesting yeah. that American sign language yeah. is similar to French. So if we go to your but, Facebook page, but, oh, go ahead. Queen, Queen, Um, So so signing systems are based off the local culture, okay? Uh, So, and the only countries in the world that share the same signing system is Canada and the United States. But sign language is based off culture. Most people don't know that. But even in the U.S., you have Northeast, South, and West in terms of cardinal directions. And what you find is that there are certain colloquial signs that like my cousins in New York may use that we don't use down in Texas. So <laughs> it's all about culture too. So that's how most people just don't know that, but go ahead and look at it. And it's an interesting thing that you say that because like over here, that means okay. Uh-huh. But in certain Middle Eastern cultures, that's going to get your butt kicked because uh-huh. it means uh, it's, it's, it's referring to a part of your body that, you know, uh, okay, you, we just you, move you on. sit on. <laughs> 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 There we are. There we are, Corey. There you go. I like it. So, and then Justine is like, uh, black folks sign different. Yep. So, uh, and Giselle is saying, wow, that's so cool. I had no idea they had different types of sign languages. And uh, look at, look at uh, uh, Prince Quasi. See, he's over in Ghana just enjoying himself. I'll go forth and make yes, more money. You know, he's a hot man. <laughs> named out Kevilon Spirit. <laughs> and then he can go to the shop. He can get a, a flask. Yes, he can get the gemstone flask. Because, you know, we all have our adult breath beverages of choice. So when we follow, if people want to follow you on Facebook, they will find that the entire Facebook page is all about uh, deaf people signing. It's It's awareness for people that may not know as much about this community. That wow. is correct. That is correct. And you said something interesting when we were talking. You said that when you're talking about somebody that's differently able, just like you would for any other different ethnic group, you got to learn the cultural norms of that. Can you explain the importance of that when it comes to working with people who are deaf or vision impaired or have any other special needs? Well, I'll say the biggest thing of it is about uh, social accept social acceptance and what you consider to be um, socially accepted, if you will. Um, you know, as hearing people, we have norms that uh, certain things uh, we particularly don't do. You know, um, so an example of that would be, I think, when we had spoken and you guys were talking about, you know, someone just ducking and walking through two deaf people who were um, signing mm-hmm. versus them if they were standing upright and just walking through. So that's that's one way of looking at it as well. Um, if you were sitting staring at um, two deaf people signing, mm-hmm. that is considered rude. It's almost like you're eavesdropping on someone's conversation. Whether oh. you know it or not, most people, you, you do get fascinated by them signing. You do. But for us as um, Americans, that is typically not uh, viewed in the best light. However, elsewhere, it could be OK. Remember, it's all of, so it's, everything is culture, culture to where the signing system originated. That may be OK, let's say, in 
the Gambia, whatever signing system that they use there. Whereas maybe in South Africa, it's not the same. Like I have a book on the different signing systems and protocols and stuff. Um, wow. Books like these are not um, printed or written frequently just because it takes a lot of research to do a lot of that. And of course that research requires people to move about the world to get the understanding of the cultural and social norms of the signing systems. But yeah, so that's just to name a few, that's typically how it is. You know, this is so cool because you talk about, I mean, now we know that you're also an author. Um, this is awesome. You know, uh, Giselle Moore is asking if you teach brittle, and um, I think she meant Braille, yeah, because it says Braille, but I think she mm -hmm. meant Braille. And then Philip Waldo Jr., don't even answer this, because he's saying, do, do hood counts, do hood signs count as sign language? And then Justine and they're laughing. See, they're cutting up. Yeah, Justine <laughs> they're cutting up. Well, actually, but actually, in, in regards to Philip's question, I'm going to answer Philip before I get to Giselle. Okay. So, Philip, people, there are personal, cultural, colloquial signs that are done everywhere. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. The word cornbread. Cornbread is not a sign that is, let's say, identifiable in the printed language of American Sign Language, but that is a sign that Black deaf people use in America. Oh. They created it. It's because remember, it's cultural. Sign right. language is cultural. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now in terms of Giselle's um, question, I think her uh, question was about Brill. No, I, I do not teach Braille. Tadoma is a methodology that is used to teach people who are blind and deaf basic language. And what you use is you basically teach them cues using this right here. Right All right of right this right here. Okay. So different letters, they learn how to use the vibrations on your throat here, <clears> throat> excuse me, mm. as well as your facial, your facial expressions and what your mouth does to learn. Okay, that's what that, that's what that is about. This is not an easy task. There are not very many Tadoma specialists in the world. So FYI, if that is something that you are into, you have patience. Hey, there you go. <laughs> wow. Now you're working you know, you, you're you teaching everybody a lot. Uh, Giselle is definitely saying uh, she's learned a lot because she really had no idea. It's pretty neat and amazing. We got people coming in here saying greetings to my family, uh, friends, and special guests. Uh, I don't know who you know that is, Corey. Snowy. Super Snowy. 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 Yes, absolutely. She didn't say favorite, so I didn't know. Yes, <laughs> yes. So this is fascinating to everyone. And then, you know, um, like Giselle is saying, that might be something she's going to do. She's, she's been thinking about it for her son because in their family on her husband's side, they have glaucoma issues and if he were to lose his son, you know, that sort of thing. So this is very useful, but you also talked about culture. And I know that with your new podcast, we're going to share a clip of uh, the trailer for the podcast. And you guys can uh, hop on there. I'll drop it into the link. You can follow it anywhere that you can find podcasts. This is something else that you had created. So I know you always try to work with uh, people from the continent of Africa. And so did you want to set this up or did you want them to just listen? Sure. It's it's only 30 seconds. Um, and it's just what, what it's showcasing is, of course, a microphone that I basically um, wanted to be as a person and the background of different uh, landmarks on the continent. So that city scene and, and buildings that you see, those are landmarks uh, on the continent, okay? So it's okay. not just like it's a, uh, exactly on the continent of Africa, yes. And and I have, I have, I have a, now, now I can share. So XDMC was actually um, helping me as well to uh, hone in on the particular trailer. So shout out to my brother XDMC out there. Yes. Um, so yeah, he helped, he helped to hone to hone it in and everything. So yeah, nice. Let's so, hit play. Yes, I'm gonna play it. It's based on Anchor, but this is something else that you said it's ready now, which means you have the copyright for it. It's licensed, the trademark. It wasn't all the necessary business steps to protect your intellectual property. That's right. Trademark is in, so don't even try it. <laughs> <laughs> don't test her, gangster. That's it. Mm -hmm. I'm a, don't. I'm a, for y'all. 
Nice, nice, nice. So this is good stuff. So you have this podcast coming out, um, but you we also have Prince Quest talking about them graphics is fire. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Yeah, I need to talk to XDMC. I told y'all XDMC is fire. Barnstorm, barnstorming Productions. Miss Grace, if you like the graphics, lick a shot one time. <laughs> Get your gemstone flask at Shop Nick Max. So Corey, um, so, um, your work, <laughs> your work with the special needs is, is, has taken you to or led you to Ghana to establish a business because you have a philosophy that a lot of people don't really grasp. That is, if you enable everybody, then the entire population, the entire community benefits, and that is especially true for people who when you enable people who are differently able. I know myself. I've been underemployed for a long time, or I was underemployed for a long time. And when Corey says underemployed, he means that he's graduated at the top of his class. Summa cum laude, 3.99 GPA. People just couldn't get past the vision loss for me to have. Um, I went to an interview one time, and they were like, the lady said, I'll be right back. And she goes to the back, and she's like, he can like, hear her. He's blind. Now I'm like, oh, not going to get this one. Right. So I've had those challenges, but thankfully, you know, I'm, I'm a creative person and my wife is a very creative and supportive person. We were able to start our own business and use our own hands and talents to uh, to create uh, business opportunities for ourselves, just like you, Liz and Vinny. But you're also using your talents to create business opportunities for people such as myself who've experienced those moments of underemployment because they can't see or they can't hear. So we want And to this talk, is in Ghana that in you're Ghana, doing this. In Ghana. So we want to talk about Mary Lee Bakery and what you're doing to uh, to enable the entire population through your work with the special needs. Totally. Uh, I want to go back to something real quick that Laquita had mentioned about the podcast. So the podcast um, content is different than what you see on my channel. So the first two episodes that are there, um, I had a gentleman on talking about the uh, education system in Ghana. He is basically a headmaster um, of a British school there. And the last episode, we had um, a gentleman on talking about um, currency valuations on the continent um, against Western currencies or FYI. Now, in Ghana, the Marilee Bakery and Institute is basically a program which is under Hepshetsuit's migration, which is the registered NGO in Ghana. Now, when and you say... No, I just want to clarify for people because in okay. the states we have nonprofits that are 501c3. And in the, on the continent of Africa, their equivalent is an NGO, non government organization. Correct. Okay. Now, the 501c3 parent organization is stateside, which is called Across Africa. Okay. And so, what Mary Lee Bakery and Institute plans to do is to basically use vocational techniques to teach children with sensory impairments how to bake. And they can take those baking skills and become bosses to business. So the program is called Bakers to Businesses. So they, they will learn how to bake and then they will learn how to sell what they make. And in doing that, they'll learn about profits and margins and all this good stuff so that basically they could run their own business once they leave the Institute. Because what I have just learned just in my experiences that I um, just living is that anyone that gives to their um, local economy, their local society, they feel uh, empowered, emboldened with that. And so um, a lot of times what you find is that special needs children um, in a lot of different countries are still looked down upon. And so our plight is to let them have their own sense of normalcy. And that's what we plan to do. We plan to do that. And then we will expand it across the continent. 
Now, I, I probably will, you know, be with the ancestors at some point and we have to go ahead and give the gavel and the, the torch to somebody else to keep the thing going. But right. that's what the plan is. You know, this is this is good stuff. Just so you know, speaking of good stuff, Corey, I'm sure you love this. Miss Grace said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> from earlier when we were talking to her. Uh, hey there, SD and SD and H99 says, hi, how are you? We got, uh, speaking of Ghana, you know, you got the Mary Lee Bakery Institute in Ghana, the African superstar. She's right there in Ghana, living her best life, has a wonderful channel talking about the culture like you're saying, American superstar, that is what you are. You know what? He always giving people a theme song, <laughs> Blizzard Biddy is dancing, I'm dancing, it's Friday, that's what we do, right? And so I, I really appreciate what you're saying about cultural norms because the African superstar, I know that's what her channel is all about, trying to get you to understand what's culturally normal in Ghana, you know, she's in Accra, so guys, go to her channel, she talks pretty frankly, and uh, just so you know that Zenobia is uh, saying hello to you, and then Justine is also saying this show is dope. Giselle can't wait to play it back, because her phone keeps ringing in between. Y'all heard Corey's phone ringing. <laughs> and it's not talking to me, my phone talks to me, since I can't see. And now I'm a. I know we, 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 I know we're trying to get to a point where we can wrap up the conversation, but I got two questions for you. One, I know you talked about Tadoma as a method. Are you familiar with palm printing for the deaf and blind, where they actually do sign language in the post person's hand? Oh, right, because you yes. know, printing yes. yes. earlier. Yeah, yes. what's next? Yes. I'm, no, I'm familiar with it. <laughs> and that's one method of also communicating with people who are deaf and blind or deaf and blind together. So you said sensory issues there at the you said sensory issues there, so specifically deaf and blind at Mary Lee Bakery Institute. Correct. 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 Okay. Now, the second question is, if someone wants to partner with uh, the Mary Lee Bakery Institute, is there a way that they can make donations to uh, support the efforts that are going on there in Ghana? Yeah, how does that work? Sure. So, um, acrossafrica.org, uh, we were moving our domain to a different provider so that the, the transfer is in progress right now, but you will be able to go on to acrossafrica.org and hit on the um, initiatives page, I believe, and there will be a button on there that says um, where you can donate. And we are registered with the IRS and also in the state of Delaware, you can pull up our paperwork. So this is legit um, if you need to get a Tax write off, depending on the amount you know that you um, donate, because I think the tax uh, requirements you have to have a, basically a certain amount and all of that. So, but yeah, we're we're legit. We're registered. Um, we just try. We're just trying to do uh, big things here for those of us who are just need an extra hand. You know, just need yeah. an extra hand. They need an extra hand. Know, that's what I liked about when you were talking about people when they're empowered. <laughs> Uh, you know, they can give back to their community. The, the person is empowered. The community values them more because they're bringing value to the community. It's a win win. I know for Corey, a lot of people will see Corey doing stuff and they'll be like, hey, if Corey can do it, I should have no excuse. So I should be doing better, <laughs> you know, because they realize he has challenges. He can't see his eyes don't work and he's still getting stuff done. You know, he's still fathering his children. They don't realize at home. You better. Push. I'm like, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You don't have a choice, right? I'm like, look, bro, we got to move forward. Ain't no backwards steps. We can say COPA. We can look back, but we're moving forward, you know? And so... Totally. Uh, totally. Yeah. And one thing, um, Laquita, I think you had asked me earlier, and I may have forgotten, it may have been you or Corey, but when you mentioned, or you were asking about the traveling and stuff, I don't know if I hit, I didn't hit on it um, as ahead. well, but I want to put a, a note in there. Um... So, yeah, I, I pretty much have been everywhere except on the continent of Antarctica. Um, I'm on my fourth passport. I like to travel and I love music. So typically my, my, my travels have been geared around music. So I like to follow the tunes, kind of like... Uh -huh. um, uh, uh, the Pied Piper, if you will, but I'm not. Right. <laughs> I, mean, I am not mesmerizing folks with my tunes to get them to follow me. 
but <laughs> you get the drift. But that's that's what I wanted to say. Now, Elizabeth, at all, she probably she she's gonna deny this one until the cows come home. But she kind of hinted the other day that she had another business. Since she worked with the deaf and people that could read lips, she probably was the cause of NFL coaches holding the clipboards in front of their mouth to call plays <laughs> because she was telling us that people that could read lips were being hired by NFL teams to read the play calls from the other coaches. So Elizabeth may have had another business that she's just not telling us about. You know what? I didn't have that one. I, I actually, like when I would take the lip reading classes in grad school, they weren't my favorite. Only because even though certain things that we articulate and enunciate, our lips do move the same. What I found is that people with thick accents and stuff, I couldn't, I, I, I couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. So that was not my strong suit in, in, in reading lips. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, I went to um, lip reading school every Wednesday, Friday during revivals, Sundays, um, when else? Because we went to church and oh boy, let me tell you, you're going to learn how to read some lips in church. You know, uh, <laughs> Giselle is saying this has been informational. Uh, we got uh, Justine saying she's putting in her order now. Uh, Mr. Oh, Wade. Awesome. Two is saying really great show because they're on that website. They're clicking those links. Let me tell you, uh, we all sell <laughs> saying facts. Philip Baldo, awesome show, and and I'm glad to know you got a, a moment of clarity. She says, "Okay, thanks for comparing. Now I understand better because we really try to explain things a little bit more." So when we were talking about Corey, you being blind and what the center is for, like the deaf and the mm -hmm. blind, who is going to help? You know, that's that's great and. Giselle is just like you. She says, music is a beautiful thing. So I do want to show everybody your YouTube channel because, of course, we want everybody, if they have not followed you, make sure they follow. All they have to do is go to your name, Lizabitty, and they can find out all about Africa. It's all things Africa, like different. Uh, your building project is on there, you know? So if people want to see what's happening with the building project, and they can see uh, some of the footage. You know what? We were watching this earlier, and so um, it was forward. It was moved forward in the video. But we can see that the building's going up. They can go to your different. Um, they can go to your different videos and all of those good things. But for you as a person helping folks out with all of these things around the world, how how does it work with being legitimate? As far as trademarks, copyrights, licenses, insurance, how do you know how to get all of these things in? Hey there, Cheryl Ruth. She's just saying, hey, y'all just made it in. Don't worry. You can rewind on the live. You're fine. And if you're watching on the replay, make sure you hit hashtag replay squad. Leave us a comment. Yes. So tell us a little bit about the legalities. And so that way, if we are interested in doing business internationally, we'll know. Is it different over here? Is it the same over there? Do all the different countries have the a reason, similarity? And the reason we're asking is because a lot of times people think in Africa, it's just a handshake, a high five, and a hug, and then the contract is <laughs> signed. But even if you look at people like My Thoughts on Everything, you look at Water Maya, they talk to attorneys. African Superstar. Water African Superstar. They talk to attorneys all the time mm -hmm. about you know legal, legal issues as far as land, buying land, purchasing land. So there is a legal process for everything everywhere. You just have to know what that legal process is where you are. So that's a very good question that you're asking. So yeah, please. so let us know because I've only done business in the States. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. so, so first, let me say, anytime you register a trademark, they will ask you on the USPTO website um, if you want to do it internationally because there are different ramifications um, for that. And all of that um, in terms of, you know, protecting your intellectual property you you also would need to see wherever you are these in terms of these other countries what their laws are um, also so yes it would become um more costly now is it to your benefit i'll say yes and here is why you never know what item you may trademark or copyright is used you never know i mean it could be 15 16 years down the road and then all of a sudden, someone wants to use the theme for Afrothiopia, you see. Um, and even for parents, when you talk about leaving and bequeathing things to your children, 
that is something that you can leave behind. Once you set up your um, corporation, you can do that and ensure that they are the ones that can take over those marks. So um, now how did I, let's say, get into that copywriting and trademark? Um, maybe reading, I, I, I can't really pinpoint something significant. However, I do have a very dear friend of mine who is, um, her business is solid. I mean, she's up there. Mm -hmm. And when I would always go to some of her um, business classes that she would host, or even when she and I would just talk on the telephone, she uh, one thing she always would say to me, um, and still does to this day, is make sure you have your business in order. Don't get caught with not having your business in order. And that right. basically means protecting your business, protecting your um, intellectual property. That's what she meant. So I knew exactly what she meant. So yes, it's, it is an additional cost. And sometimes when you are a new business, you don't want to invest in certain things. You, you, you don't. Um, because you're saying, oh my goodness, it's too costly. It's too costly. Okay. And the first time that you decide not to do that, and then someone starts and does something that you've been doing, the trademark law is not like what it used to be where it used to say something to the effect about the first use of the item. Mm. If no one, if, if no one um, protests your mark, they can use it, whether you've been using it or not. Now, there are some wow. legalities um, behind all of that. I'm not a lawyer to get into that with you, but there, there's something about that. Um, I'm going to give you an example. And some of you, some of the people who may rewatch this may know. There was a show um, on Facebook and Instagram and used to, used to garner when it first got, now it's super big, but, but when it was first in its infancy, it was called the Sparkle Party. Mm. You had other, other um, creators and business owners on Facebook and Instagram, they were calling their stuff like um, diamond parties and sunshine parties and all this stuff. But the ideology behind what they were doing was the same as the person that started the sparkle party where she had to go ahead and get the rights to that, to stop people from doing that, to stop that because they also can infringe on your brand, especially if your brand is growing at an exponential rate. So something to think about. Um, so even like the guest that you guys had the other day um, and she was talking about how she do the bartending and all of that. And she makes the frozen drinks and all of this good stuff. Yeah. And her having her insurance and all of that. So we have to do good business. Me personally, um, I like to support black owned businesses first. They get the first right of refusal if I can't find someone outside of that. Okay. Right. Meaning if, if someone black does not have a business in this particular arena, then I will go elsewhere. But one thing we have to do, I like people to have their stuff in order. And so if I conduct business with you and you don't typically have your things in order, I'm not going to be fooling with you because I'm a, I am a commissary professional. Although I have the filthiest mouth that you probably would ever hear, even though I'm being nice on this channel, I am a commissary professional. And right. if you study business with me, then I'm going to go ahead and pay you because I need to pay you. But we're going to be done. We're going to be done. And right. so we just have to, as a people, as a collective, uh, business owners, learn how to do better business. One, you never want to be caught. And I'll end it here. We never, you never want to be caught with your panties down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a, that's a good way to end it. Y'all huh? heard it first. Y'all heard it right here, straight from the mouth of Dolomite's sister. Let's <laughs> keep it a G rate today. Boom. You know what? That's it, right. <laughs> has everything that you were saying about uh, business is so on point. Donnie goes in, is here. Hey there, Donnie. Donnie goes in. Yeah. He's, you know, his last few videos he was talking about on his channel, Donnie Goes In, he was talking about oh, yeah. obtaining your PIN, getting your corporation set up, save yourself on taxes. And then here's Zenobia. She works for the IRS. She's like, I'm at work right now with the IRS. Don't forget to file your taxes. And right. uh, it was also amazed, like, wow, you are on your fourth 
passport, you know. Um, Cheryl Ruth agrees with you. She says pay it on the front end to prevent losing so much more on the back end. This has been right. this has been great, Mr. Wade seventy two, a businessman. He was talking about that uh, business yesterday, yesterday. Yep, sure and he not. said, "Keep the business draws up." <laughs> <laughs> well, keep the business draws up. Yes, yes. Keep the business draws up. And that's like, funny. Business draws up. Yes. <laughs> This has been so wonderful uh, hanging out with you, learning all about businesses. And, you know, Mr. Wade 72, he was on yesterday talking about ASCAP, BMI, and getting all of your paperwork. Yes. I just think it's so wonderful that people are aware of what we need to do, how to do it. And if we don't know, there are places to learn. Y'all go to Donnie Goes In channel. Uh, he's laughing, but he was just telling us that, you know, and three different videos, all the steps how to do it for cheap, for free. And then like you're saying, for the things that you don't want to invest in, he's at least giving you the things that you have to invest in at first. Most of it is just time. And shout out to all of our YouTubers here today. We got XDMC with Barnstorming Productions. Check his channel out. David Hunt, check his channel out. African Superstar, check his check her, her channel out. Donnie Goes In, check his channel out. Giselle Moore, Giselle the, Moore farmer. the Farmer. Check her channel out. So we are, and don't forget, check out Elizabeth's uh, YouTube channel, according to Elizabeth and her podcast. Actually, it's just Elizabeth. Oh, just Elizabeth. Yeah. Yeah. And then also check out her podcast, Afri Ethiopia, and then go to her web, various websites and shop Elizabeth's websites as well to get your flask on. Shopnicknacks.com. Shopnicknacks.com. It's your in the link. The link is in the chat as well, get but you know, we'll put it back in there. But in the, we want we're gonna uh, we want to move toward to our plant based treat. I want everybody in the chat tell me what is your favorite your favorite comfort food because this one is a comfort food for me and it ties right into Elizabeth's work with the Marilee Bakery in Ghana. The Queen Marie has created a plant based treat that just took me straight back to my grandma's house with a drop biscuit, <laughs> good old drop biscuit, some gravy. Good gosh, I'm my like, woo hoo! You know what? We'll see you soon, Elizabeth, <laughs> right after the plant based treat. <laughs> so All now, right. all right, it's time for Chef Laquita Marie's drop biscuits as today's plant-based treat. Good old-fashioned drop biscuits. To prep, bake the acorn squash and remove the seeds. All the ingredients are here. Pause the video so you can see them all. We're going to create our buttermilk. Lemons have citric acid, which reduces the risk of you forming kidney stones and potassium for nerve and muscle communication and blood pressure regulation. Almond milk, soy milk, rice milk, they all work. Dissolve the salt and sugar in water. Use a half a cup of water to dissolve them in. I'm going to put the squash in a bowl. I'm going to mash it with the buttermilk so that they are already blended before I add anything else. Dissolve the baking powder in a little bit of milk. Acorn squash has antioxidants that reduce inflammation leading to diseases like arthritis, diabetes, different cancers. So I've mixed up the butter with the two and a half cups of flour. Mix into the flour and butter are coarse crumbles. Add the squash mixture to the flour and butter. Acorn squash has vitamin A and lutein for healthy eyesight, plus fiber and potassium for lowering blood pressure and regulating blood sugar. So I'll go ahead and add another half cup of flour to this. Mix it and refrigerate while the oven preheats to 400 degrees. Just drop these biscuits oven warming at 400 degrees. Bake 12 to 15 minutes until golden brown. Let's get some butter on these. I did use some Earth Balance plant-based butter. Let's make it a breakfast biscuit. Make this a breakfast meal. This has a nice smoky flavor. Air fried. Tofu. Tofu is made from soybeans. Eating soy products reduces the recurrence of breast cancer and relieves menopausal symptoms. These biscuits were delicious. They tasted like sweet potato biscuits with sausage. Took me back to my grandma's country kitchen. All right, good old fashioned drop biscuits. I tell you, make one reach out and slap your mother-in-law. But I wouldn't do that because my mother-in-law would slap me back. Boom. So. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this has been so wonderful hearing all about business, business opportunities, keeping your business straight because like Justine Ruth says, you can lose your credibility, supporters, customers, and those that will hold it down for you when your business is not in order. So, yes, uh, you know, Cheryl Ruth is like, yep, all these things. Yes, everybody's loving 
the food, Justine says, looks delicious already. Zenobia is just smiling at those biscuits. Mm-hmm. And Prince Quasi says, my favorite comfort food is seafood. They mm-hmm. eat plants and each other, so I eat them. <laughs> <laughs> Corey, let's say goodbye and they're cutting up in here. All right, guys, it's Friday. We had a lot of fun. We want to thank this video for dropping all this wonderful knowledge on us today. And we want to have, let you guys have a great weekend. And thank you for joining us on this episode of the Blind Guy. His wife. They're like live. Join us every Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at 11.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for more fun and fabulous people in our network. And we're going to say goodbye by saying deuces. Deuces.